IFA means independent financial advisors. These are people who go out there, uh, they run their own shops and they have clients and they bring uh, clients to, they bring clients to, uh, to us and they also uh, can take clients to any other investment firms um, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the industry. So I want to give uh, a few minutes to uh, some few more people to, 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 to log in. Uh, but I'm really, really excited. I was really looking forward uh, to coming and having this conversation because this is about you. This is about how we can help you to make money. This is about how you can make, you can make consistent um, uh, income uh, um, um, using your IFA shop. So thank you. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for... For, for, for logging in. We've had uh, quite a, a positive response. I think we have about 80 people who have registered with us. Um, I can tell a couple of them are, are late, so uh, just bear with me as, as I, I, I wait for them. So we will also be be uh, broadcasting this live on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. Um, we are shooting on all cylinder cylinders, and uh, that's 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 exciting. Uh, yeah. For all the people who have uh, logged in, I know there are people who from Uganda uh, who um, had registered. I want to say. A big hi to all of you uh, back there in, uh, in, in Uganda. We have very many friends in Uganda. Uh, it's always exciting uh, to, to work with, with, you, with your people. And uh, for the uh, independent financial advisors um, in our industry, a big hi to all of you. Um, you guys do a good job. Uh, we really appreciate you. You're very important in our sector uh, in making sure that we evangelize investment and we take investment to as many people as possible. Uh, because as I've always said, if you've been following me, investment is, is, a, is, a, is a necessary survival skill. Uh, everybody needs to, needs, to, needs to invest. And uh, uh, that is what the richest 1% have perfected. And the, many, the, the other many of us uh, have not been able to, to participate in investment because we viewed investment as uh, for the rich people, but investment is for all of us. So I want to start uh, this presentation. We have uh, uh, some critical, we have a good quorum and uh, we are good to go. Great. Uh, I am joined by my colleague, he's called George, George Gingo. He is the IFA coordinator at uh, Nabu Capital. And uh, he's George, George, uh, the focus every day is to make sure that our independent financial advisors have, are having a good experience, are having a good time uh, working with NABO. We are out there uh, helping them to pitch to their clients, to win mandates, and to, and, to, and to close deals. So George Gingo is a very key person uh, in making sure that you have an easy life when you, when you partner with us at NABO, at NABO Capital. So... Please, uh, today I just want to focus on three, three, three letters. Wow. Wow. And have you, have, you ever, have you ever bought something that was expensive and it was just because uh, you did not want to disappoint the person who was selling to you? Has that ever happened to you? It has happened to me. I have bought uh, some things and I wondered to myself, how did I ever buy these things? Uh, not that they were bad, but, but I felt I really did not want to disappoint the person who was selling because of just how well they did it. Uh, so so uh, for those who are on, on, on the webinar, I think they, they are able to see, they're able to see my, my slides. And uh, yeah, so yeah, you go home and you're like, why, why, why did I buy? Why did I spend so much money? I remember when I bought my first car, um, sorry, my, my, my current car, it was a, it's a four-wheel drive. And I spent so much money, and me being an investor, 
I was like, man, why did I buy this car? But the guy who was selling it really did a good job. You know, uh, the way he described the car, it was almost like a person. I, I, I felt something so emotional uh, about me connect with it. And you know what? I couldn't resist to write a check. Why? It's because we were wowed. We were wowed by the, by the person who was selling. And that's, that's what I really want to talk about today. How do we wow our clients? How do we, how do we, selling is not supposed to be a, a, a painful exercise. Selling is supposed to be a fantastic, a great experience uh, to, 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 to go out there, to interact with the people that you're selling to and to wow them. When you, when you change that perspective, that you're out there to wow your customers, then you enjoy the experience of selling. I want to give a, some example, an example. I have a friend of mine, and today we can call him Solo. We can call him Solo. Solo is a very good friend of mine, and he runs a shop. Uh, it's not in the business of, uh, you know, financial selling in financial instruments, but he's still in the investment space, space selling um, uh, land. So Solo's work is very simple. He goes out identifies good pieces of land, bulk, bulk land, subdivides them and sells them. As simple as that. And he's been doing that in Nanyuki. Nanyuki is, has, is a very good name. And also he's, he's lately ventured into Kajiado. And uh, anybody who's bought land, anybody who's, who's uh, been keen about buying land in Kenya, they know Solo. Solomon Wangwe. I call him Solo. I would say without mincing my words. Solo is probably the most trusted land dealer in Kenya today. And Solo has one secret. He knows how to wow his clients. And he, he gave me a story um, about himself um, uh, not too long ago. He wanted to take his, uh, he wanted to take his customers to Nanyuki uh, for, uh, for a site visit. And you know, they agreed with, uh, with his customers to meet at a particular point in the in the CBD, and then of course they would they would drive to Nanyuki. So they met very early in the morning on a Saturday, and uh, the the customers uh, got into into the van. To, to, it was a tour van, and uh, off they went. And he had a surprise for them. Instead of heading to straight to Nanyuki, they found themselves at the Wilson Airport. And Solo had, you know, uh, planned this surprise all along. They had chartered a flight at uh, Wilson Airport and they were all presently surprised. So they, of course, uh, onboarded uh, the flight and 40 minutes later, they were at Nanyuki Airstrip. For anybody who's been to Nanyuki, you're familiar with it, with a, with a nice, very uh, cozy um, uh, Airstrip. 40 minutes, they were there. That spared them three hour, a three hour drive. From there, there was a car waiting for them. And uh, soon enough, they found themselves at the land, uh, which uh, Solo was selling. It was a 20 acre piece of land. It had been subdivided into half acres. He had done, he had done the, uh, the roads. He had uh, fenced the land. He had cleared the place. The place was looking, you know, neat and tidy. It was very presentable, and uh, and uh, they saw the land. They loved the land, and from there, Solo had another surprise for them. Uh, he took them to one of the best restaurants in um, in Nanyuki for lunch, and they had a nice, sumptuous lunch. And from there, they were back. They, they got back to Nanyuki Airstrip, and from Nanyuki Airstrip. They, they, they boarded the plane, they were airborne, and guess what? When they were still airborne, Solo removed the, uh, removed the, 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 the subdivision, how the, the deal plan, how the land has been divided. And he, was, he asked the, his clients, who is interested to buy? Who wants to book uh, a plot? And you know, um, of course, the clients looked at the, the deal plan, and the, from the moment the first person said, I am buying, and I've 
and identified this plot, it was like a scramble. Everybody was by, everybody was booking. And by the time that the plane touched Wilson Airport, the 20 acre piece of land was completely gone. It was sold out, totally sold out. And one half acre was going for 1.8 million shillings. If you have been dealing with the land, have dealt with the land before, one acre piece of land uh, will produce about um, uh, uh, seven uh, quarters, um, seven, seven one eight. But in this particular case, he was selling, uh, he was selling uh, half acres. So the whole land was gone. 1.8 million per half acre sold out before the plane landed. And then, of course, the plan, the, there was a, there was a, the Nissan waiting for them and took them back to where they had met initially and everybody was back in Nairobi and they had many hours to themselves to go and spend with their families. So, what do you think about that? Wow. That's what I call wow. Solo wowed his customers. It was surprise after surprise. And guess what? He was very well rewarded for it. And I want us to just look at how can we, how can we wow our customers? What is, the, what, are the secret, what is the secret to wowing our customers? Mm -hmm. And there are four key secrets that I want to share with you about how you can wow your customers. And number one, you need to have a unique brand identity. It's not just for the show of it. It needs to be something. What makes you different? What makes you unique? What makes people to want to work with you and not to everybody? What makes Nabo unique? Okay? And I would still want to use the, the example of Solo. So Solo runs uh, this company called Goshen Acquisition. And uh, for those who are on the webinar, you can see the logo. It's a very well thought out logo. And anybody can have a nice logo. I think it's what the logo stands for that is important. And, lo and Solo, one of the things that uh, he's really centered on is integrity and honesty. Um, out of nine out of 10 of his customers, he told me, have once experienced um, uh, a bad deal in land transactions. They've lost money in some fraudulent activities in land dealings, nine out of 10. And Solo identified this is a gap and said, because of where he's come, because of his, his efforts, because of what he believes, and Goshen, by the way, is a, is a biblical name. Uh, so you can see he was inspired by some, by some revelation from the Bible. So you can tell he's a man of integrity. He said, I want to offer something and it is going to be based on integrity. And that is one thing that has made Solo stand out. And I've dealt with him, I've, I've, been with, I've worked with him in a couple of land transactions. And I remember one of them, uh, we were buying a piece of land in Nanyuki, 100 acres. And we had this opportunity to go for uh, an accelerated uh, land board. I think they call, uh, they, they come, I can't remember the name for it, but there's a name. <clears throat> so there's a normal board, and then there's an accelerated, accelerated land board. <clears throat> and when you go to that point, and I sent, <clears throat> I sent an email to the directors. So no sent, uh, called me and told me, Pius, if you go for anything le less than a main board, I'm, I'm, count me out of this particular deal. That's how much it means for Solo. And he asked him why. He told me, you know what? All the bad deals in Kenya uh, are concerning uh, land deals have happened through this um, uh, accelerated land boards. And he said he goes for nothing less than the main board, the main board that is recognized by law. And that's, that's, that's solo for you. Integrity, integrity. There are no shortcuts uh, when you deal with solo. You either, if, if you cut shortcuts, you, don't, you can't deal with, with, with solo. The second thing that really uh, his brand stands for is excellence. Solo stand, uh, believes in excellence, doing everything to perfection. You can see the meticulous planning of that site visit. 
that on that particular Saturday. From from uh, booking a chartered a chartered flight, you know, organizing for 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 the lunch, making sure that uh, the customers are going to have an easy time and the land, you know, he he did so much work. Excellence is a trademark of uh, of his brand. The other thing that uh, you notice about him, he has two sets of investors. Uh, they are the land investors and they are those people who actually finance him. And one day he told me a particular a story that really touched my heart. Um, and this is a, a gentleman who uh, very early, when he, very early he was starting on his business, he told the gentleman, I don't have enough money to buy the land that I want to buy and sell to start my business. But if you give me, for every one million shilling that you give me, 24 months from now, I will put 2 million shillings in your bank account. And true to his word, 24 months later, he put uh, 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 2 million shillings for every million shilling that he got from, from this particular investor. Excellence. Nobody had to call it. That's excellence. Excellence uh, that, de- that, defi- that underpins his brand. He also runs, uh, he has, he's also distinguished himself. Um, in the space of selling land. There are so many people who are selling land. But when you hear these words, own land in Kenya, you know you're talking about Gosh and acquisition. You're talking about Solo or Solomon Wangwe. That is how uh, good he uh, and unique his brand is. Then the other thing you'll see, the pictures. When I see a picture that is on about land, I can tell you this picture has been done by Solo or this picture has not been done by solo. And like the picture for the ones who I put to see my screen, it's a picture that you can see it's been taken uh, uh, from an aerial point of view. So solo goes, uses uh, drones uh, to take pictures uh, so that he can have the best, the best uh, view for his customers about the, uh, on the kind of land that they're buying and the neighborhood uh, of where they're buying. That is how meticulous he is. Excellence, excellence. Um, So number one, if you really want to wow your customers, it's got to start from a unique brand identity. Who are you and why are you in business? If it is just about making money for yourself, I'm sorry, you're going to disappoint yourself because you can't wow your customers that way, okay? Unique brand identity. The second, so yeah, that's a wow. <laughs> uh, the second key for to running a successful uh, sales agency or IFA workshop, you need to see your customers as your friends. Do you see your customers as your, as your friends? Do, you, do your customers see you as their friend? That's key. I've seen, I've, I've been in this business for a long time and I've seen you know, uh, depending on the kind of customer that someone is facing, some people just, they cannot see themselves. Can you see yourself as a friend to Dr. Chris Kirubi? Do you see, do, can, you, can you be comfortable in his presence? Can you be comfortable in the presence of, of His Excellency uh, Uhuru Kenyatta? Can you be comfortable with, uh, in the presence of Dangote, uh, Aliko Dangote of Nigeria, the richest man in, in, um, in, um, in Africa, can you be comfortable? If you see them as your friend, then you can be comfortable. But if you don't see them as your friend, then you can't be comfortable and they cannot also see you as their friend. So these are all human beings. And I've looked, I've just been looking uh, at, you know, the kind of people that uh, Solo has been dealing with. And, you, and, and there's one common trait about them. They are young, they're not, not very young, but they are middle-aged, corporate, and very successful executives. Young, middle-aged, uh, corporate executives in the city. And there's one thing that is com- also common about, they have one unique need about them. They're all very busy. They don't have time. They don't have time to go and buy land for themselves. They don't have time to go and look for uh, you know, unique pieces of land out there. They don't have time. Time is the biggest problem that they have. And guess what? This is exactly where Solo steps in. Solo gives him their time. And he's that 
trustworthy guy who can go out there, look for the best land, and they can trust him. And these people, he hangs out with them. He goes to clubs with them. He, he does videos with them. He's, he's always, he, these are his friends. So this is, this is, this is what is so unique. They, 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 they've reached a level in their relationship where they know that Solo cares about them. Solo knows their families. Solo knows uh, the extended families. They refer people to him. So it's become one big family. So Solo's customers do two things to him. They buy land from him and they also are financiers for him. When he's buying land, they also, um, they also come in, step in with their finances and make financial investment. When he's selling land, they refer him to customers. So this is a network of friends. Do you have a network of friends? Or do you just have a list of customers? If you have a list of customers, then that's what you need to start transitioning them to people who are your friends. You need to know their friends. You need to, be, you need to know their children. You need to know where their children go to school. You need to know what is their biggest pain point. So that's the second key to, um, to uh, wowing your customers. And yes, it's a wow. If you can transition your customers to friends, that's another wow. The third key is that you've got to add a unique value. It's good to have friends as your customers, but if you don't add value to them, then soon enough, you will lose all of them. And that's one, another thing that identified that is very unique about Solo. Solo adds value. How does Solo add value to his customers? Number one, as I've already mentioned this, Solo is a stickler to due process. This is what the law says. Solo will go every single step of the way and he will be accumulating paperwork every single step of the legal process. He never skips any pro process. And most of the, look at the most of the uh, land transactions that have gone by. It's been about, it's been because people have skipped process. So if you're selling money market fund, if you're selling... Uh, any of the financial products that we sell. You've got to follow the due process. Do you understand the due process? If you, we all know that the CBK and the world is very much out there now uh, against uh, money laundering. So you've got to make sure that your customers are not laundering money through you because that means you're, 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 you're not following due process. Due process requires that you know your customers know your customers, know the source of, your money, of their money, due process, okay? So that's one way of adding value to your customers, okay? You, they know that you deal with people like them. They know that you deal with credible customers. They would, like to, they would like to be in the same room with your other customers. So due process is uh, something that I found Solo uh, doing very, very well. Number two, he is a stickler of documentation. He accumulates documents every step of the way, every step. Of, when he's acquiring the land, he wants to know who used, who, what is the history of this land? Where, who used to be the original owner of this land? How many hands has it, has it passed through? He wants to know the history. If you're an IFA and you're selling for, for NABU capital, you're selling for, for Saiton, you're selling for uh, Britain, you're selling for ICA, you need to know who you're selling for. Can that person be trusted? Because we're in the business of trust. Accumulate documentation along the way. Accumulate documentation along so that when, in case something goes wrong, you can always go back to the process and prove that you did, uh, you did uh, your work. So uh, that's another thing that I really liked about, about Solo. If you go to... If you go to Nanyuki and you see these um, beacons that are probably half my height, they are six feet beacons. Uh, half of it is underground and half of it is on top of the ground. Then you know that is Solo's land. That is how unique his land is. And he told me how he came about, uh, about that. He was buying land in Nanyuki 
was putting Bitcoin and spending so much money, then it would come a couple of weeks later and you would find the Bitcoins are gone. They're gone with who? They're gone with the pastorates. The Masais, the Saburos, the, the Borans that are passing, when they're passing by, the, you know, the, 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 the animals destroy the Bitcoins, they, 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 they move away with the Bitcoins, and when he comes to the customers next time, he can hardly find the Bitcoins. And he, he thought to himself, I must find a solution to this. And he designed a beacon that was six foot high, very heavy. You can't carry it. And that has become a hallmark of any land that Solo has sold in, in, uh, in, uh, in Ayuki. So that's another way of adding value. So he adds value by making sure that the beacons are not moving. The other thing that I really liked about dealing, about dealing with him is, uh, is uh, his zero tolerance to corruption. Man, that guy pays zero coin, zero, zero. He does not pay anyone to make sure that to, 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 in his land transaction because he does not, does not want it to come and bite him at some point. And also it is against his, his values. He's a born again Christian, he is a staunch Christian. He, he believes he, he is not a Christian just by words. He lives it. And so corruption doesn't come, doesn't augur well with, with, uh, with his business and with his personal values. And that's another way that he adds the value to his customers because his customers know I can, whenever I, whatever I buy from this guy, I can count on it. No one will ever come and knock on my door and say that it was not bought you following uh, the proper channels. And the other thing that I also noticed about him is that he uses the top lawyers. Most of the people who deal with the land, they use, they use you know, the, low, the low lawyers. I, I don't know whether it's such a word, <laughs> but they use the cheapest lawyers that you can find in town. Solo never spares a coin. He uses Anjawal and Khan, and you know Anjawal and Khan, these are the, one of the top lawyers in the country and they're expensive. I was once buying a piece of land and I asked him to recommend a surveyor. And he asked, he told me, Pius, I will recommend a, surve a surveyor for you. He will charge you a lot of money, but it will be worthwhile. So he sent me this contact, I called the guy and uh, the guy said, you know what? I'm gonna charge you 400,000 shillings. Wow. That's the most expensive <laughs> surveyor I've ever met. And guess what? I, I, I use a lawyer, uh, that surveyor. And when that surveyor gave me his report, I understood what Solo had told me. It was uh, pages upon pages, and it was telling me this land um, uh, was, uh, was telling me the history of the land, and, uh, and uh, he gave a verdict at the end of that recommendation. He said, this land is good for you to buy. I can vouch for it. And just on that, I said, 400,000 Bob, it is worth it. Those are the kind of partners that work with him. So who are you working with? You as an IFA shop, um, do you, how do you add value to your customers? Do you make sure that your, their money is safe? Do you make sure that you're partnering, you're not just, the, you're not just chasing the highest returns possible, but you're also taking them to the most trustworthy brands, most trustworthy uh, uh, fund managers out there. These are some of the questions. How do you add value to your customers? And in such a unique way that your customers will want to come back to you. Do you wow your customers by the way you add value to them? Big question. So, wow. That's another way to wow your customers. I'm now on to my fourth and final key to our own customers. And this one for me is the, is the big one and the most important one. It's give, give, give before you ask. Give, give, give before you ask. Many salespeople, they see themselves as a recipient, not as a giver. When you change yourself from a receiver to a giver, it completely messes up your customers' mind. Have you gone to these places where they sell meat and you find these guys, they're, you know, 
they are busy roasting meat and the moment you step in they cut a piece of meat and they give to you and they say test it and they and, and before you're done testing one they give you another part another part and they tell you test it how do you feel do you feel like oh, you can just walk away no you feel obliged you feel you know what i can't i can't have this and all these pieces of meat <laughs> and just walk away you know give 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 when you give the customers give back so uh that's another thing that i found that is very interesting about solo we have already given you the so- the story about solo i mean chartering a plane is a very big risk he spent um i think 135000 shillings to charter ch- ch- that plane to take his customers to nanyuki and bring them back so they could spend more time with their families he gave he gave so but why did he give First of all he listens to his customers he knows his customers are busy corporate executives they are busy time is the most pressing resource if they can pay you for the just to give them more time so he listened to their customer need he knows their customer need number 2 he is you, you educate 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 don't just sell a product educate the customer once you understand what your customer wants you need to educate them on their need and the kind of and the kind of solution explore with them the kind of solution that would be suitable for them so again educate is another thing uh solo one thing that about that that i like about solo is that he's an expert he knows the subject of land he understand the laws allow around land he understand the process uh, around around land acquisition he knows the ins and outs of his product do you know the ins and out of your product once you know once you become an expert in what you're selling once you come you become an expert in what you're selling then uh, um um uh, and by the way i'm being reminded that you you ask questions as i'm continuing i'm i'm getting very carried away by this by this story about solo and and how i can trans i can impact that to you and how i can inspire you to become like solo yeah so become an expert in what you sell study it know it and then educate your customers about what before they before they before they buy and because you have so much knowledge about in various investment products then you're able to put together a solution you don't sell products you sell solution don't sell money market sell solution don't sell equity fund sell solution don't sell a fixed income fund sell solution what are you solving when a customer is buying into a money market fund what problem are you solving for them when a customer is buying into an equity fund what problem are they so are you solving for them so listen educate and then propose a solution then make a promise you've got to make a promise there is no business that doesn't make a promise and therefore even you you must make a promise in your in your ifa shop yeah and when i say ifa shop it might sound like something small but actually it can be a mega business a mega mega business and in all this please have fun have fun in your selling process have fun drive with your customer do meet in a nice club play a game of uh, play a game of, uh, of of tennis as you're discussing business have fun when you're discussing business that's an experience that's a memorable experience so give 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 and then ask So those are my those are the four keys that I want to focus on today. I want to leave you with those four keys. Um four keys to wow your customers. So um if you go to if you go to sorry something is going on with my <laughs> presentation has disappeared. Okay. So I want to just to click where you 
you you you listen to solo saying uh one or two things in one of his one of his videos and he was talking about the history of Hi. the Hi thanks for joining me in the last 5 years as we've started to learn in various parts of the country uh, we have tended to learn quite a bit about the history of land ownership in Kenya and today i'll share with you what we've learned about the history of Karionga which is in Nanyuki as uh, you're watching all land in Kenya I'm Solomon Wangwe. So, Karyonga is located about 22 kilometers from Nanyuki town. Um, if you haven't been to Nanyuki, by the way, you need to do yourself a huge favor. I hope, I hope the, the rest can, can, can listen. Bus, can hear the solo's voice as he's uh, talking about the history of land, beauty, history of land in Kenya. So Karyunga, 22 kilometers from Nanyuki town, is where we, Goshen Acquisitions, have been investing over the last five years, along with our customers. Um, Karyunga happens to be a former uh, branch, so, uh, much like most of like Ibe County. I think County. I'm, I'm, I'm being told that there are some people, here was I think the people on Facebook may not be able to see this, so this I, re I recommend that you go to, you go to his uh, YouTube uh, page. Um, and, and, and just learn more about how he's, he's, running, he's running his business. Yeah. Okay, so. Trying to get back to my presentation. So yeah, today we are talking about the subject of wow. How to wow your customers. We've seen how Solo has been wowing your customers. I have given you four tips on how to wow your customers. And I hope uh, you will be wowing your customers from, from this uh, day forward. So the art of wowing your customers is called customer experience. The art of wowing your customers is called customer experience. This is a new battlefront. This is the ultimate battlefront for clients. If you just know how to wow your customers, you will never sleep hungry. You will, the sales will be looking for you. Wow your customers. So welcome to the concept of customer experience. And I think I want to, to stop there and uh, get some questions and then I can answer. Yeah. Okay. Anyone with some question? Let me see. I can see it here. Please send through your questions. Yeah, so today we, as we wait for questions, uh, today we are, we are, we are talking about um, how to run a successful IFA shop and we've narrowed down uh, to how to wow your customers. How do we get our customers uh, wowed? When we wow our customers, we give them a great experience. They enjoy um, uh, the, in, the, the sales process and eventually they become our customers. And I started with this question, how if you have ever bought something that was so expensive and it was because you did not want to disappoint the person who was selling to you. And that person, what that person did to you, that they wowed you. And this is, this is the real art of selling, wowing your customers. And we've seen the art of wowing your customers is uh, called customer experience. So I've gotten some questions here. Okay, okay. Steve Atema, most fan, fan managers seem to sell money markets as their main product. Is it because it is easy for customers to comprehend it, to comprehend given the risks or makes, or makes more sense to you as managers? Actually, to, to be honest, uh, uh, Steve, it's the reason why people are selling, most fund managers seem to be selling uh, 
uh, money market is because money market is is the one that speaks most to customers. There are so many other products that um, we have, but they are, they are not selling as fast as money market. And it's because money market is intuitive. Money market is, is just like putting money in a, in a deposit account in a bank. And therefore, many customers are familiar with that experience. But when you tell someone uh, that you're selling them equity fund, uh, really, the customer is like, why should I buy equity fund? Um, and that's, that's, that's the issue. Uh, uh, equity fund doesn't speak to needs, uh, but money market speaks to needs, speaks to needs. So one of the things that we, we, we made a decision as NABO Capital is that we don't sell products, we sell solutions. And uh, we began a campaign around uh, investing with purpose. We start with an aspiration. We help customers to meet their aspirations. And uh, we start, we ask ourselves a very interesting question. Are we, uh, are we a Kenchik or are we a KFC? And we saw ourselves more as, as, a, as a KFC. When you go to, to Kenchik, you've got to package for yourself. If you're 10 of you, you've got to imagine, you know, the 10 of us, everybody will eat a quarter chicken, you do the mental calculation, and then you place an order. Give me this quantity of chips and this quantity of, 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 uh, of chicken. But when you go to, to, KFC, to KFC, they've already imagined that you'll come uh, as a family, as two people, as three people. And therefore, for us, we, we say, no, we, are, we are see ourselves more as a, as a, as a, as a KFC <laughs> where we prepackage ourselves. So we invest with purpose. So people come to us um, uh, because they, are sort, they want to sort out uh, the education needs. They want to make sure that their children go to school uh, regardless of whether they have a job or not. And therefore, we sit down with our products, money market products, fixed income products, uh, other high-yielding products, and even equity fund. And we say, what combination of products can actually solve this problem of, uh, of education? So I believe that um, our, our industry hasn't risen hasn't risen to to the to the point to the to, to the point where we are actually speaking about customer needs and therefore money market has tended to perform better than other other products. Retirement uh, also products also tend to have tended to perform well. Uh, we have um, almost 1.1 trillion shillings of retirement funds as an industry, and that's because many people can understand the language of retirement, uh, but people can don't understand when we tell them. Uh, invest in an equity fund. Another question um, I get here, if I have experience as a salesperson, is it hard to transition into an IFA? Absolutely no. It is not difficult to transition as an IFA. Um, it is very easy because all we need to do is to train you. And today, this is just one of those trainings uh, which has gotten you interested. So we need to move you to the next gear up uh, where we train you about products about uh, uh, the kind of customers that you're going to face out there. What are their needs? How do you, how do you pitch to them? How do you make sure that um, you, you keep your promises to those customers? So Grace Waboy, it is very easy to transition as, a, as an IFA. Uh, there is a gentleman called George Kingo and uh, he will put his, he'll put his uh, contact details um, in the media platform that you're on and you be, should be able to reach out to him. He, he's the one who oversees our IFAs and he should be able to onboard you. It's a very, very simple process. Okay, okay. What, what else? Um, Nick Decay is, he has two questions. How do you start as a youth? And he also asks, what kind of investment should we start as youth? What kind of investment should we start as youth? Now, I'll tell you something I told one of my brothers. I told him, it's, you either sell your, your own product or you sell other people's products. The, the only way to become wealthy, the only way to, to, to build your portfolio, the only way to, um, to one day be a, 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 a Chris Kirubi, to be a, a, a Dangote, a, 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 
Aliko, to be an, an, another Aliko Dangote, is to start from where you are. And many youths, what they lack is capital. And therefore, if you lack capital, then you don't have your own assets to sell. You don't have your own products to sell. You don't have your own service to sell. So the key to your success is dependent on you selling an, a, a, other people's products and services. And IFA is a, is, a, is, a perfect, is a perfect starting point for you because this uh, will not only give you um, uh, income, but it will also uh, usher you into a network of people who can help you in the future. Your clients, uh, the clients in investment uh, can, can be very good network for any other thing that you may want to do in the future. So a good place to start is as an IFA, this is the best side hustle that I know. If today I was in university, with all that I know today, I would be selling investment products as an IFA. And by the time uh, I'm done with, with school, or by the time um, I get uh, a, a more permanent job, I'll make sure that I have a very consistent income. You know, you, you can use your network. Your, your dad knows somebody. Your uncle knows somebody. Your uncle is rich. You can, you can reach out to so many people when you start this process of just writing down who, who is connected to you and who is connected to the people around you. Okay? So, Nick Decay, please uh, feel free to uh, start your journey as an IFA. Steve Atema again is asking, how does one become a NABU IFA? And is there some form of training? Yes, uh, Steve Atema, as I said, is a gentleman called G George, uh, George uh, uh, Gitonga, and he is going to put his contacts uh, in the, on the platform that you're on. And please reach out to him and he will onboard you. If you're interested, you can become an IFA by tomorrow, this time tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Fanning is saying, is saying great content here and it's free. Thanks, Nabo. Thank you so much for, for acknowledging, uh, acknowledging our efforts. And Neville, Neville uh, is asking, hello, Mr. Pires. Well, I am a Forex trader in Kenya and it has been very great for me. I'm 26 and honest and honestly being and honest and honest being and earning good cash is interesting. How can I invest this cash to earn passive income? So Neville, we this is this is exactly what we we we, we like doing to help people to transition from active income into passive income. So get in touch uh, with us. There's a lady called. Um, uh, called Gladys Mugai, um, uh, aka uh, Abby. Uh, she's, uh, she's a very nice lady. Uh, she's going to put her contacts, she's going to reach out to you, and she's going to tell you uh, of the next steps how to, be, to start earning your passive income. Mr. Fanning uh, is saying, Hi, Pires. Uh, being that the money market fund is constituted of interest bearing investment vehicles, uh, bonds, corporate. Corporate um, papers. What is your risk assessment of the performance of money market funds in these COVID times? Um, money market funds have been rock solid, even in this time. Money market funds invest in instruments which are up to 13 months uh, to maturity uh, on average. Uh, money market funds uh, are the safest investment product that there is, not just in Kenya but also globally. And I can uh, challenge you, go and see the last time that there was ever a collapse of a money market fund. And uh, that was in 2008, when there was a global, at the height of global financial crisis. So money market funds, as long as they are run by credible institutions uh, and uh, with uh, the real prof professionals behind them, they are the safest products, even in these COVID times, they have continued to do, to do well. Uh, he's, uh, Easter is still asking, do you think that the money market funds will be affected in any way? I don't think money market funds will be affected in any way because they are investing in very short-term instruments and uh, so far so good what we have seen. Uh, unless something uh, out of the blue uh, uh, disrupts the entire financial system, 
I do not see anything that is going to affect money market funds. Um, and as long as also you are, you are partnering with the right with the right institutions. Okay, let me see. I'm getting questions from all over. Uh, is Eric Okoche, how does someone in Uganda become an IFA? Or is this limited to Kenyan citizens uh, and companies? No, absolutely no. We have very good, um, we have very, very good uh, uh, core networks and co uh, clients in Uganda. Eric, please feel free to get in touch with us and we'll onboard you as one of our IFAs. We have IFAs in, in Dubai, we have IFAs in Ghana, we have IFAs uh, across, we have IFAs uh, globally. So uh, you are, you're very close to us to even miss this, this kind of uh, opportunity. So welcome, Eric, uh, to be an IFA of NABO Capital. Lewis Munene, can you ask, can you facilitate IFAs with an email? I think uh, that is a question that uh, we'll also be able to answer for you. Uh, George, George uh, Kitonga is at hand to be able to assist you. We'll assist you with all these things. There are many things, many good things that we, are, we, are, we, we have in store for our IFAs so that we can make their, their experience also to be one of uh, being wowed. Yeah. Simon Waweru, hello, Mr. Pires. When investing in equity products and your goal is capital preservation as well as good flow of income, what type of shares uh, would you advise to invest? So Simon here, you have said a couple of things. Um, equity products, equity means that you're taking, you're taking risk. You want to make, you, you want to make a very good returns when markets are right, but also you don't mind when markets go down, like today, how markets have been because of COVID, uh, you, you need to have appetite for your principle to be, to be put at risk. So I think Simon Oero, when I listen to your needs, your needs are around capital preservation and good flow of income. That kind of client, we always recommend that we should go to more of fixed income like products, not equity. Or even if you go into equity, it should be a balanced, uh, balanced fund. Uh, you probably um, skew much more skewed towards fixed, fixed income products. So, uh, Simon, uh, for us, it's about the solution, and the, sol the best solution for you is fixed income like products. Joy, Joy, Joy O, uh, as, as a diaspora, what advice would you give? Uh, as an IFA, you are welcome to become an IFA. As a client, also we are also welcome to become a client of Nabo Capital. We have many clients in, I, in, in the diaspora, and uh, we can also use some more hands in the diaspora uh, uh, as an IFA to help us to reach as many uh, people in the diaspora as possible. So you are welcome. Um, and Kinyanjui, are equity funds regulated? Absolutely, yes. Equity funds are regulated. Uh, by this, the Capital Markets Authority. Um, please, uh, Nick, Nikki, Ndeke, please explain what IFA is, uh, is about. That's a good question. IFA is, is stand, stands for Independent Financial Advisors. So in these are people who, uh, who go out there to sell uh, investment products for any of the fund managers. They have no allegiance to any particular fund manager. They look for the best product for their clients and they look for the best manager for their clients. So today they may be with Britam, tomorrow they may be with uh, Nabo, tomorrow, the, the day after they may be with, uh, with ICA. So IFA, IFAs are independent sales agents and they know how the industry is, uh, is panning out they know uh, how which products are good. They know which fund managers are best for their clients. So that is why they are trusted by their clients, and they are very, very important uh, ingredient in our in our business. So it is important that uh, that you find the best uh, that the customers find the best IFAs, uh, so that they can be able to to be advised accordingly. 
Joy is asking, do you have training for your customers to, uh, for your customers to understand your services? Um, yes, we have training. And today this is a training. This is one of our IAP trainings. So uh, feel, please uh, feel free to join in our future, future trainings. Uh, yeah, Joy. Uh, let me see if there are any questions that are missing. Once again, I'm so thankful. I really enjoy when we, when we interact this way. Um, someone is asking, uh, Abby is asking, is the current market status, uh, in the current market status, what are some of the tools, skills an IFA must have in order to take advantage of COVID pandemic uh, market effects? I was just looking at um, a, a, a message that was sent to me today and this message was uh, about top 100 companies that were featured in Financial Times that have done exceptionally well in this COVID environment. And the common thread with all of them is that they, they, they are very tech-based, they are very digitized. Uh, Apple, you know, Facebook, Zoom. And so the, the theme, the theme of, the, the, the theme that I would recommend IFAs who are looking to, to, to thrive in this environment, you need to digitize. You need to, you need to operate in these platforms that I'm reaching out to you. Uh, the, say, the same way I'm reaching out to you is the same way you reach out, reach out to your customers. And uh, that means you need to equip yourself with some good Wi-Fi. You need to equip, we need to um, uh, subscribe to one of these good platforms that will not let you down when you're talking to your customers. Uh, you need to uh, uh, have your, your, your uh, business card digitized. Um, I, I just got mine digitized the other, the other day. And therefore, if someone wants to refer me to anyone, they just send uh, my, my digital card to whoever they want to refer me to. And that makes things easy. Um, my digital card now, I can send it to anyone in Boston, anyone in, in, in the UK, anyone in, the, in, in, the, in Dubai, in a, in a click of a button. So for me, I'd say digitize, 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 and you will thrive in this environment. And I think this is going not to, this is not going to go away. This is a new way of engaging. And uh, uh, meeting face-to-face uh, -face is going to still be important but it's going to be uh, just the cream um, uh, uh, on top of the on top of the cake. Yeah. Pato Moas is saying, asking, as a diaspora, is it better to invest in an individual or an or open an LLC uh, to to invest through? Sorry, it seems to be a missing one. Uh, ask him to look through the questions in the webinar. Okay, so I'm going to look through the questions in the webinar. So Peter Pato is asking, as a diaspora, is it better to invest as an individual or open an LLC to invest through? So it's all about your aspirations. If you if you're really thinking multi generational, if you're really thinking uh, very very long term. I would always go for an institutional way of investing. So uh, that vehicle that you're calling LLC could pro probably be, be a good one. Also, tax is a very big issue when you're investing. It's always good to consider tax. You can spend so much uh, money and, 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 and time investing, but all the money can be eaten away by tax if you're not properly structured. I'm not uh, encouraging anyone not to pay taxes. I'm just saying sometimes we in invest in such an inefficient manner that you end up paying double taxes, we end up paying uh, triple taxes when we shouldn't. Mm -hmm. So the right structure is key. But again, I'll say, Pato, there are tax experts that, uh, that, uh, that we have within the group and we use them to advise our clients appropriately depending on which jurisdiction you're coming from. So this is something that is also sensitive to where you are today or where you're investing from uh, today. So uh, you definitely need some, some, uh, some consultancy advice. 
uh, so that you can make the right decision. Okay, there's a question here. How do you qualify a potential investor, investor's liquidity needs? It's about by asking questions. You remember this in one of my slides, I was saying you need to, you need to listen. Uh, many salespeople are very, uh, they, they, they come short when it comes to listening and therefore they tend to, get, to be given, uh, you know, uh, just a fraction of the investor's portfolio rather than the big chunk of the, uh, the investor. So the investor will know whether you're listening. If you're listening, they will, they will want to give you a big chunk of their portfolio. They can even give you control of the entire portfolio. But if you're not listening, then uh, you, you will... You will, you will struggle to get. So if you listen, you will know uh, the liquidity needs of a, of a customer. And uh, it's, it's something that I see every day. Uh, someone will mention something like, you know, uh, this I'm, I'm investing so that by 2022, I may be able to take my, ch my child to university abroad. That already is a liquidity event. You know, I need to plan for this liquidity by 2022. Someone else will say, you know, I'm putting money here uh, just to uh, for a short while in parking so that I can be able to pay for a big expenditure that is going to come in another two or three time, three months uh, time. So, so you've got to put to, to to really listen carefully on what your customer is saying so that you can uh, assess the liquidity needs of your customer. Yeah, so it is possible to do that. In the AUM mobilization sector, what are the main practices to ensure month-on-month -month steady conversions? So again, for me, um, we have we, we, there's, a, there's an entire science towards, uh, towards selling. You've got to start, first of all, by mapping your customers. Who is your target customers? We saw the target customer for, for Solo. Our customers are busy, are middle-aged, uh, very busy corporate executives in the city. And they have, they have no time to drive to Nanyuki to look for land and spend weeks and weeks um, there, uh, you know, visiting land boards and, 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 and convince, meeting landowners, con negotiating uh, land prices with them. They have no time for that. So you've got to understand your customer. And then you've got to have a... Um, and a brand awareness plan. How do you, how will you put your name out there? And you've seen uh, Solo has put, uh, positioned himself very nicely using the YouTube channel uh, by constantly educating his clients about uh, land opportunities in Kenya, about uh, the challenges that people tend to face uh, when, they're, when they're investing in land. We, I can take you through the entire selling process that he goes through before he closes. So for me, you need to have a process. You need to have a philosophy. You, see, you also need to have something that is unique about you. Why do customers come to you? Um, why should customers trust you? That's key. Uh, is it because of integrity? Is it because of yeah, how uh, the kind of value you add to them? Is it, is it because of the experience that, they, that you give them? There has to be something that is unique about you. So um, what you're asking, Abby, is a very important question. It, we can spend a whole day here, and we have already been trying, trying to answer that question. But uh, the simple answer I have given, if you aim to all your customers, you will never be disappointed. You will never go without sales. You will never go hungry because customers love to be wowed. Okay, Collins Waweru. Hello, Mr. Pires. What do you think about Forex trading and the risks involved? Also, do Nabo Capital trade in Forex or plan to trade in the future? Nabo Capital does not trade in Forex and we also do not intend to trade in Forex in the future. We deal with multiple currencies, but we've never seen ourselves as experts in, in currencies. And this is because currencies there are so many variables that change uh, and therefore affect the value of a currency. And uh, we have had many experiences with many currencies across the continent and across the world. And, uh, and uh, 
we, 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 we concluded that because there are about 2,000 variables that change every day and affect the value of a, of a, of a, of a currency, we will never be experts in that space. So it's an area that we have left to the people who da, do currencies and do currencies 100%. You cannot afford to do currencies and do many other things, the kind of things that you're doing. Our job is not to trade in currencies. Our job is to help customers to create wealth for generations. And that is how we engage with currencies. And therefore, um, uh, you had asked me, what do you think about forex trading? It's a very complex business. And uh, anybody who's made money consistently over the last 10 years, uh, is somebody that I would highly respect because it changes like that and you lose all your money. So I stay away from currency and never trade in currency. That's, a, that's, my, that's, that's, that's me. And that, that, it doesn't mean that currency trading is a bad thing. Yeah. Great. I think uh, we've... Uh, possibly addressed uh, most of the questions, if not all of them. I want to have just one more final look to make sure there's nothing I've missed. Uh, this is part of me wowing my, my customers. Um, I leave nothing to chance. Gitonga, George Kitonga has already given out his email address. If you want to become an IFA, please uh, take this email address, G dot gitonga at nabocapital.com g dot gitonga at nabocapital.com yeah and george Steele is going to show you the next steps how to become an ifa so um my parting shot to you Go and wow, uh, wow your customers and you will never be poor and you will never sleep hungry. God bless all of you and thank you for tuning in. Bye for now.